I am going to talk about the speed project and running 500 kilometers from LA to Las Vegas and hopefully answer all your questions about TSP and running a crazy ultra marathon in the desert. So I am back from the speed project. Um, if you guys don't know what the speed project is, it is a race from um, LA, Santa Monica Pier, to uh, Las Vegas, and it's 500 kilometers um, solo. Uh, so I did that completely by myself, um, and uh, that's about 320 miles. Um, you go through LA, um, then you go through like the power line, um, Death Valley, um, and then you hit Las Vegas. Um, it is a race, an unsanctioned race, so um, I had to plan it all myself. Um, we had an RV with us, um, so I had Paces, I had Tyson, Randy, and Brad, um, three guys that helped me through the race. And then I also had Ollie, who was the driver. Um, we had an RV next to us with all the food, water, anything, medical, any supplies. Um, and yeah, I had so many questions about the race. So I thought I would answer them all here. So the first question is, how do you enter the race? I entered the race uh, via Instagram. So basically, I have known about this race for ages. Um, they do a relay version of this race where you have um, a team of six or more people and you relay all the way. Um, but uh, I know that they did it solo as well and that was something that really interested me. So I applied solo. Um, I will link the Instagram below so you can follow them because they're amazing. Um, they also do one in Chile. Um, it's completely unsanctioned, so there is no help along the way. Um, you're completely by yourself. Um, uh, you only have the support of your team, which you obviously have to find yourself as well. Um, and yeah, so I messaged them on Instagram, said I wanted to apply. They sent me over an application form and you have to answer loads of questions like, um, who you are as a runner, why you run, things like that. It's not just about your time, it's definitely not about your time. Um, it's about your journey and how you got into running and what running means to you. Um, I then got chosen to run, which was amazing. Um, this year there was 33 solo teams. Um, overall I came ninth, which was amazing. Um, third girl. And um, I think there was about 60 teams that did it, 33 solo runners, which was, yeah, crazy. How did I train? Um, I trained, um, I mean, I'm always running. So it's not like there was this hard cut and I'm gonna train. Um, I started training as soon as I found out that I was going to be running this race, which was in November time. Uh, from there, I slowly progressed my miles. Um, so I usually run about 80 kilometers a week, um, depending on what I'm training for. Um, that's if there's nothing on the cards, I'm probably running about, you know, 70 or 80 kilometers. Um, I then up my miles. Um, so as of November, I was the minimum I was running was 100 kilometers a week, um, with high weeks of about 150 kilometers each week. Um, I reduced all speed workouts, so there was no speed workouts. I was only doing slower miles um, and longer miles. What was my longest mileage? Um, it's kind of weird. I run 50s and 100s last year as um, races, um, but as soon as I found out that I was doing this race, um, I actually couldn't fit in huge long runs just because of work and other things. So um, the best way that I went about this was the maximum I actually ever did in one go was 30 kilometers, but that didn't mean I got um, less training in. I just did 30 kilometers in the morning and then like a 20 in the evening. 
Um, and I actually think splitting that up really helped because um, I got that rest in the middle. So my recovery was a lot better. How did you feel confident enough to sign up? Um, I don't think you ever feel confident enough to sign up, even if you are an experienced ultra runner. Um, things like this are kind of scary, you're just gonna jump into them. But I had the same feeling, signing up for my first marathon, signing up for my first half marathon, my 10K, everything. Um, I sign up and then I commit to the training. I, it's not the other way around. I don't do all the training and then go for a race because I don't think I'd ever feel 100% ready for anything. <laughs> um, so why did I choose the speed project over a track or a marathon race? Um, so for one, I don't do any sort of track races. Um, I don't find them enjoyable. I don't really like even doing track for um, training. I find it, I don't know, it's just not my thing. I'd rather be out running with friends or on the trails. Um, and I like speed. That is fun to do, but I'd rather do it like in a park or just, yeah, track's not for me. So track events, that's not my thing. Uh, marathons, on the other hand, I love. I'm still gonna do marathons. I'm running Berlin at the end of the year, um, but I wanted to do the speed project because it's been on my radar for such a long time. And to be able to have the opportunity to do it, I just had to take it. How did I progress from marathons to ultras? I did my first couple marathons and I then did a 50k with some friends just like to try it out and I think I sort of I realized that I enjoyed that endurance more than trying to beat a time um, seeing more how long I could go for instead of how fast I could go so I think ultras were just sort of that natural progression and I enjoyed them more I enjoyed them more than being on that marathon course um, what was the gear that I used? So I'll sort of divide the gear that I used into two. What I had with me was a hydration vest, an 18 litre one. Obviously all my hydration and water, I'd usually carry, depending on the heat, two 500 millilitres, and then I'd have one in the back, uh, which was a two litre one. Then also had a extra battery charger, my iPhone, um, I then had my watch, which is a Garmin Enduro 2, which is absolutely amazing for anything ultra um, or multi-sport or anything like that. I then also had a medical kit with me, like a small miniature one. And I also carried my walking poles, which were lucky poles, um, super light, really easy. Um, I also then obviously had food and all of that um, and all of my clothing was provided by Reebok and my shoe rotation that I had was also Reebok. Um, so that was all sort of on me, a head torch. On my person, always carried an extra head torch um, just because you don't know if that section might take longer and it might go, uh, it might get dark. Um, so I always had a spare, a spare head torch on me. And then the gear that I had on the RV was more substantial. So I had a proper medical kit. Um, I also had all my food, all my water. Um, Yeti supplied us with a huge cooler. So I had loads of ice in there, which was brilliant for sort of icing my feet when I needed it or um, having ice baths or anything like that. Um, we then also had all our cooking supplies um, on the RV. Um, how and when did I sleep? I get asked this a lot actually. Um, I probably slept quite a bit um, and it was more towards the beginning of the race because I was 
I wasn't as confident in um, doing a race like this. I'd never done it before. So I did want to make sure I didn't burn out. and I wanted to make sure I finished. My main goal of 500k was to finish. So I think the first day I did about 120 kilometers and then I slept for four and a half hours. I then got up and did just under 100 kilometers. And then from then on, I had about three hours sleep or I'd have a two hour nap. I, um, the hardest part about the race, um, it's weird because I actually think the hardest part of it was um, afterwards. I think that night when we finished and also the next day was probably the hardest for me because you work so hard and you got through it all and then it, it's over. Um, that serious post-race blues, um, yeah, that was really, really hard. As well as sort of having to pack up the RV um, get rid of everything in the RV. Um, also the pain that I was in, I sort of blocked out all of the pain that was going on in my legs um, and anything like that. Um, and then it all sort of hit me all at once when we finished. Um, and then the swelling happens and sort of your body trying to recover. Um, so yeah, one of the hardest parts wasn't actually the race, it was after the race. Um, and then the easiest part of the race, going into it, I thought, oh my goodness, what if um, I can't do it? What if I really like struggle? You hear so many, I mean, ev every run is a journey, right? And it's all so different. You might have a terrible race, um, but this one I found really easy to stay positive and just, I kept thinking, just enjoy this moment, enjoy the journey and be enjoy being able to run this. Like the amount of support I got from my team, from Reebok, um, from everyone that helped out, from Morton Gels to Yeti, um, yeah. The amount of support that I got was so much that I just kept thinking, you know, I, I get to do this. There's n there's never been as much support as there is now. Um, what would I do differently if I did it next time? Um, I don't want to say that I'm already planning to do it next time, <laughs> but um, I would absolutely love to do it again. And if I did it again, there's just so many learnings. Um, I think I realised I didn't need to separate it up by 10k. I think sometimes when I was going into the night and I thought, oh, I better sleep now because I don't know about that next 15k. I think next time breaking it up when I needed to and just saying, I'll meet you at the next gas station, not having these dead set places that I was going to meet would have really helped. It would have helped me get that little bit further when I still felt semi-fresh to keep going. Um, I also think the power line, there is a 100% reason why everyone takes an, either a 4x4 up there and doesn't do it unsupported. Um, yeah, when I said I was doing unsupported, people thought I was mental and I now realise why. Um, I think having that 4x4 and just helping unload, take everything off, or if you need to pause halfway on that 67k, having that ability to do that, I think I'd do that next time. Um, explain your nutrition. That is a hard one to explain um, because it was very varied, um, but I am pretty good at being able to eat anything on a run and sort of carry on. Like, I don't get stitched, especially in this sort of running. You're running so slow that you can pretty much eat and run. So um, in America, they have these things called bobos and they're basically like oat bars. So 
there was a mixture of Bobo's, um, I had Morton with me, so through night sections I had Morton caffeine gels, um, I also had Morton solid bars, which are basically oat bars, um, those were sort of the nutrition that I had along the way, um, I then always had hydration tablets with me, um, and um, the team at the RV, I basically had either two things. I either had a huge bowl of granola with bananas and almond milk, or if I was feeling something savoury, they'd make me um, avocado, um, quinoa, eggs in a tortilla with lettuce. Um, so those are sort of my two things that I had. Um, and then I think I had a big stack of Denny's pancakes after the 67k because when I left, I was like, see you in the morning, I want some pancakes. And they actually got me pancakes, which was amazing. But um, yeah, apart from that, those are my two main food sources. Um, and then I just constantly ate oat bars different kinds of oat bars, but that was just like a constant that kept going in. Um, even when I run in training, I definitely base it on how I actually feel rather than I must get this in every 30 minutes. Uh, I'm more of someone that if I realize that I'm sort of lacking in something, I'll have it. Um, I found solids over gels. Um, what I enjoyed the most was my team. Um, one, I couldn't have done it without my team. And also they sacrificed all of their running. You know, I think people, I think Tyson did about 160 or 80 miles that week. So almost, well, over half the distance with me. Um, and everyone was so positive. Um, yeah, I mean, I just, I could not have done it without them. And also just having such a good time. We had such a good team. Everyone just, you know, we had family meals. We um, hung out. I mean, they hung out way more than I did because they were in the RV together the whole time. But yeah, I think just having an absolute adventure and having fun uh, for five days in the middle of the desert that was the most enjoyable part. Um, what was the weather like? So the weather, um, it was cool in the evening and at night. So I was probably wearing like leggings, long sleeve top, then a rain jacket, and then um, a woolly hat, and sometimes like a, a snood to cover my face. Um, so it was pretty chilly, it was probably about like um between four and nine degrees at night which when you're tired and cold it just makes it feel like it's about zero um and then in the day it would get up to about 28 degrees maximum um which was sort of changed like in la and las vegas it wasn't as hot but in the, on the power line um and around there like you know in in the valley it, it was really hot, it was really, really hot, and the sun is unrelenting. So um, I'd always wear a cap with, um, you know, like a, a shade bit at the back. Um, we had ice that I'd wrap up and put around my neck. Um, yeah, and when Ollie massaged my feet, when they were really swollen, you'd use ice and ice down my feet and we do ice baths in my feet quite a lot um, just because the swelling around my toes and ankles got really bad. Um, what were the logistics? Um, so I guess it's sort of hard to talk about logistics because um, you plan it all yourself. Um, so I planned the route um, which I've got to say a huge thank you to Lucy, who was the record holder from 23. Um, I took ideas from her route and then modified them mainly around the power line um, and around there um, to sort of work to how I wanted the route to go. Um, but her route was such an amazing help 
for planning mine. Um, and then from there, I knew that I would have Brad, who I run with in the UK as a pacer, and I'd have Ollie, who was my driver, but I then needed other people to pace me. And so I reached out on Instagram to, for people to help. And um, I had Randy, who actually became my photographer, as well as pacing. He came and did about, I think, 100 miles. So carrying a carrying photography equipment and running that much, I mean, that's amazing. Um, and then also Tyson, who is from California, um, who is amazing at hills and mountains. And I honestly could not have done it without him. He did the night section with me and is just such an amazing runner, amazingly positive. And it is quite surprising who you can find on Instagram. Um, we have become really good friends, all of us and I would definitely want them back if I did this again next year. And obviously I would now pace them for anything they ever wanted um, because what they have done for me. Um, so yeah, amazing, amazing crew. Um, but yeah, logistics, uh, you got to pick up an RV in LA. Some people then drive them back once they've finished in Las Vegas, but we had a one-way drop-off, so that was great. We all dropped it off, took everything out, um, cleaned it ourselves, um, any leftover food and um, clothing um, we tried to give out to homeless people or anyone that needed it. Um, so what are the cost elements? Yeah, so it can be quite expensive, just because of the nature of it, you know, you've got to rent an RV, you've got to get all your own food, all your own equipment. Um, you've also, if you're like me and live in London, got to fly to LA and fly home. You've also got to um, get your hotels because you can't arrive on the day. Um, it starts at 4 a.m. So you've got to arrive a little bit before. You've got to pick up your RV the day before. Um, and then in Las Vegas, you got to have a couple of days. We had to have a couple of buffer days because I didn't know when I was actually going to finish. So you want to make sure you've got, you don't want to be rushing and feeling like you can't make it. Um, but I just want to say a huge thank you to Reebok because they supported me through this race and without them, I wouldn't have been able to do this race. Um, as well as everyone else that helped me. So if you are thinking about doing the speed project, it's definitely worth thinking about how, um, you know, brands can help you, um, just because that's something that makes it a little bit more realistic for just an individual, especially a solo runner, because it, it yeah, it's, um, it's definitely not like signing up for a marathon. So I think I have answered everyone's questions. Um, hopefully I have. Um, if you have any more questions, comment below. Um, and I can always, if there's loads of questions, I can always do a part two and answer more questions. But that hopefully gives you an overview of everything around the speed project and what it entails to run 500k. Um, Please like and subscribe.